I meant to do this a little earlier, but I thought I'd do a little E3 sort of recap. Um, so I missed EA's conference. Everybody hated it. I, I guess I didn't miss much. Um, or maybe I missed something funny. But uh, I usually go over the conferences. If you follow my Twitter account, at the Xbone, um, it's sort of a general gaming parody thing. Yes, Parker. With lots of emphasis on mocking the more corporate parts of gaming. Um... Yeah, I ended up missing EA. I didn't realize they were doing it <laughs> on a different day from all of the main stuff. So uh, the first one I watched was Bethesda. I um, I was pleasantly surprised to see, uh, of course, EA was right after the Orlando shooting. Um, I was pleasantly surprised to see um, almost every conference. Everybody had uh, rainbow lapel pins. A couple Sony and Nintendo actually uh, gave a little mention to it. So that was nice to see. Um, Bethesda did have their pins, and they're the first one I watched, and, uh, they were okay. Parker, please. Um, <coughs> honestly, most of their game, like, uh, all of their ideas were basically other games, but now they're Bethesda games, you know? Elder Scrolls Online, or Elder Scrolls, uh, whatever the card game is. You know, it's Hearthstone. They, they wanted a Hearthstone game. Elder Scrolls is kind of a weird... I mean, I guess it's got the same fantasy vibe, so they that's why they went for it. I don't know. Um, there's a new Quake, which would be exciting news, except the whole Champions thing, and they're talking about different characters, and I mean, it's a MOBA. Or, I mean, Hero Shooter, as they like to call it now. But, you know, it's a MOBA. It's, you know, it's Overwatch. But not as good and doesn't have the pull that Overwatch does because of Blizzard, so... Uh, not sure how that one's going to turn out. I mean, Doom was Doom turned out good, and I wasn't expecting that. So I mean, maybe it will. But Quake had an identity, and that identity was not MOBA. So that seems weird. the The whole point of the the whole reason Doom was good is they realized, oh, fast shooter with lots of enemies. That's we can still do that. That's fine. That's a good thing. Still, and they just made a good game like that. But uh, Quake, it seems like they're going a little different direction. And then the Fallout stuff is like Minecraft, Minecart stuff, and, you know, drifting either and further from the, you know, computer RPG thing where you actually play a role. It's just, you know, sandbox crap with awful dialogue lines. Not really impressed with that. Um, ugh, Parker managed to pause the recording yet again. I keep forgetting to use my keyboard lock thing. But yeah, Dishonored looked great. Um pretty much expected and they already showed dishonored last year of course but it looks like it's gonna be great um parker please um but uh it sounds like they've got like there's a achievement in the original for only using blink and none of the other powers and they've got a mode you can play without even blink now and um it sounds like they've got some cool challenge run stuff and um hopefully the balance of powers will be a bit better like there was a lot of stuff you could do with lethal powers but none of it was very practical really and on the non-lethal side you pretty much i don't remember anything other than blink being all that interesting or useful anyway um so after ubisoft or after bethesda there was microsoft they had a pretty good showing this year um xbox one s was definitely the you know main thing on stage um they had a good amount of games. They were pretty expected, but good. I was a little worried about ReCore when all the shooting started happening, but then it looks like it's got some platforming, too. So if maybe it's like Ratchet & Clank-esque mix of stuff, that could be all right. I was worried it was just going to be another, you know, third-person shooter, which I'm not sure Microsoft needs that exactly. Parker, please! Um... Yeah, their their Microsoft presentation was really awkward. The Sea of Seas Thieves thing was really, really awkward. Um, and they kept doing this thing. They they were the worst example of that stupid E3 thing where they're like, oh man, it's a, it's a real game, guys. There's a guy on stage and he's playing it. And, and we're going to pan out to a wide shot and there's a dude on stage. Look, look, it's so exciting. And it's like, you know, way in the back there you can see there's actually a game being played. And I mean... Maybe some people at E3 want to actually see the game. I don't know. Maybe. Um, their, their camera work is really bad. And the Final Fantasy XV demo looked awful. I I am not really very interested in that game anymore. Um, 
the combat just I did not enjoy it at all. I didn't enjoy it in the latest demo. I didn't enjoy the first demo. Uh, I tried to fight the behemoth without getting the uh, summon in that first demo. Uh, it's so boring and slow and it doesn't even feel possible and it's just like it just feels like you're just hacking away and it at just infinite HP and it just keeps doing the same few attacks and you run around and it's really boring and you dodge roll and they were dodge rolling through the giant's fist in the demo and it just looks so awful. It's uh there is good news on Final Fantasy 15 though. There's a wait mode where the game only plays when you're inputting actions. It's not quite turn-based, but it lets you think and act, you know, strategically and that's like the absolute best news about Final Fantasy 15 since the reveal. The game actually looked better in its reveal like 10 years ago than it does now. It's like I was actually interested back then, but not really anymore. Um, what else? The, the Scorpio stuff with Microsoft, um, that's a little iffy. I really love the idea of backwards compatibility forever. That's something that I understand Sony not going backwards compatibility because the cell was stupid, but they should have PlayStation 1 and 2 on ps4 not just the ps2 on ps4 like those are more like remasters um i really like the idea of a console where you just you have a library forever just like pc and at some point there's got to be a cutoff where they say no you you can make games for only you know scorpio 2 instead of you know the original xbox um i'm not sure what their exact plans for cutoffs are um but they were they were pretty vague and early and uh, they're focusing on 4K. I think that's a huge mistake. I think a sub-generation where everything is 1080p and 60 frames per second with some good image quality and, you know, um, endoscopic filtering and all the, you know, all the bells and whistles at 60 frames per second and not worrying about 4K, that would be great. Um, 4K, you know, they're, they're going to bump up the asset production. They're going to make games even slower. They're going to run at 30 frames per second or worse. It's going to be all of the bad things that last gen taught us, you know, evolving the tech too soon wasn't actually a good thing. So I think 1080p is really the place to set, settle right now. There's an AMD has statistic that uh, 95% of players on PC are at 1080p or lower. 4K is just not relevant, and it's not going to be relevant in one year either. Uh, it's not going to be relevant in two years. Um, it's more like a 2020 thing. Um, but yeah, they were a bit vague on Scorpio, and I mean, it's coming in over a year, so that would be why they're being vague, but, uh, I was excited at first, but then it's like, eh. The Xbox Play Anywhere thing is great, though. Um, it seems like they finally realized that they own Windows 2, and they don't need to, you know, compete against themselves. Um... So yeah, that's Microsoft. It was it was pretty good. I would say it was the second best in the show. Um, it was very corporate and very standard, um, which is contrasting to Sony, which Sony's presentation was amazing. They started with, their well, first, their pre-show was great. A lot of people missed their pre-show, which is bad. You should have seen the pre-show. It was good. They had they had Bound. They had, um, they had Hawken. They had... Uh, Pyre, which is uh, Supergiant Games' new game. Uh, they're the people who made Transistor and uh, Bastion. Uh, what else did they have? They had one more. Um, it wasn't Abzu, was it? I know Abzu was at E3, but they had they had some cool... You know, the indie games that are usually on stage at E3 for Sony, those were actually in the pre-show. Um, they didn't show Gravity Rush 3. There's a new trailer for Gravity Rush, or Gravity Rush 2. Um, they didn't show that either, but they're... they're so they started with a live orchestra and it was really good and then it just goes straight into the god of war trailer and it looks like it's a god of war for people that are tired of god of war i'm not really that tired of it but i really appreciate the change in direction and it could be really cool and they, they did this thing where every trailer just starts and they just have a full shot of the trailer no dude on stage bullcrap no wide shots of the stage. Um, some nice live music to accompany every single trailer. Um, and they showed the name of the game at the end of every trailer. And that was a really nice touch. Um, it did leave me a little confused with Days Gone. Uh, it, it didn't feel that much like to The Last of Us. 
But uh, Days Gone, I would say, is the one stumbling point on that entire um, conference. Uh, another zombie game. That's all I can feel about that. Uh, I don't think they're going to make a bad game, but I'm not sure it's going to be a game that I want. Um, but everything else they showed was great. They had, I think they had more games than Microsoft did, and they had a shorter conference. Like, I think they were the shortest, uh, but it was really good. Um, like I said, just game after game, they had, you know, they had some people come out there to talk about the games. Um, but there was so little bullcrap. It was all meat. Um, unfortunately, some of the, like, the indie stuff ended up not in the main event. But uh, I can't entirely blame them for that. I would say cut out the stage demo of Days Gone. Replace it with Gravity Rush 2 um, with some footage of Bound and, you know, or maybe an indie sizzle reel. Sizzle reel. Um, and that would have been great. Like, th their, their presentation was so good that uh, I actually thought the Call of Duty looked pretty all right. I, I am not a fan of that series, but that was that was a pretty good trailer in my opinion. Everyone seems to hate the new one. I, it seems to just be a, re, a, a mixture of it being cool to hate Call of Duty plus, uh, you know, people not liking the space thing, which I don't get. I mean, did you guys really want, you know, modern shoot brown people and brown people a stand game forever? I mean, it's kind of growing increasingly awkward, the whole modern warfare stuff and it's you know really hard to make something about modern events that is not you know really tone deaf and bad i'm not sure i would say they made anything that wasn't tone deaf um so yeah i don't mind space but uh and the modern warfare remastered being you know only a deluxe edition that does suck i will admit that but uh that's enough talk about call of duty you don't watch my channel for call of duty um, I do wish they had shown Gravity Rush 2. That looks... Oh, love it. I'm so glad they're still making that. Um, what else was good? I mean, everything was good. It was a really good... It was a good, diverse mix. Apparently, the Crash games are going to be full remakes, not just remasters. Uh, if, I'm not sure if that was clear from the conference. I didn't feel like it was clear, but they cleared it up afterwards. Um, so it's not quite as exciting as a new Crash game, but still pretty cool. Hopefully Activision... I don't even know what's wrong with Activision. Like, they've released a bunch of bad Crash and Spyro games, and they just stopped making them. And it's like, I don't know why they just don't work with Sony. Like, I know Activision kind of sucks, but I don't know why they just don't work with Sony to make a good game. Speaking of working with Sony to make a good game, that is what happened to Spider-Man. Activision has not treated Spider-Man well, and then, I guess, you know, Sony approached him, and now Insomniac is making a Spider-Man game that looks really good. Um, I'm not usually into licensed properties, but it seems like this could be a pretty good one. Parker is just so engrossed in me sitting here and talking. You want the love? Yes. What are you looking at? Um, so yeah, Sony, like, and Sony even solved the problem of the dude on stage, um, for the Days Gone demo. They had this sort of zoomed out thing where you see, you see, like, 70% of the screen is still the game. And then on the right, there was shots of the orchestra, and there was a shot of the guy playing the game. And you could actually see the monitor he's playing on, unlike usual, where it just looks like they're looking, like, down and like, uh, my mom told me to be here, uh. Because, I mean, the monitors are in the floor, so they're looking down, and they don't look like they're having fun. Um, but yeah, it, it showed the person playing without completely ruining the presentation, unlike the Microsoft ones did. Speaking of the Microsoft, the Scalebound thing, um, I don't know about that one. It, it was hilarious that we had a giant enemy crab at E3, and they were hitting the weak point for massive damage. That I'm not sure if they meant to do that, but it was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, Sony's was perfect, like almost. Um, I got to dock some points for Days Gone and for not having the indie stuff. But people complained about the indie stuff, I personally think. Um, those people can go, you know, jump off a bridge, but, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe that helped. And, I mean, it's not like we're gonna not get indie stuff because they don't show it at E3. It's just nice when they do that. Um, so that was Sony's. Um, they didn't show the Neo, and I don't think they needed to. I, I think the difference between Sony's presentation and Microsoft's kind of shows why. You know, they didn't need to do the bullcrap. 
they had games to show and they showed them and horizon looks amazing i i, I need that i whew. you know there's a system in uh horizon where if you're trying to craft something and you don't have the gear the game you can press a button and the game will make a quest to go get that item so oh, that is so good every game with dumb crafting stuff needs that i'm not usually a dumb crafting fan but i think i can survive dumb crafting for robot dinosaurs and you can hack the robot dinosaurs and there's evil corrupted robot dinosaurs oh it's so good um so yeah that's sony um the pc gaming show um i did tune in for some of that it was all right i think it was better paced it was an absolutely dreadful time spot though um, I had to watch it immediately after the Microsoft one. And then I think they actually went into Ubisoft's conference, so I had to stop watching. Um, it was an alright conference, but I mean, they didn't show much diversity of games. Like, everything was multiplayer-focused or mod-focused. Like, it was like your stereotypical Steam gamer that plays two games and plays those games for billions of years and just loves those two games and you know power to that guy but i'm not that guy i'm not really into you know the competitive mmfps crafting you know 500 dollars for you know a new gun stock skin and counter strike i'm not really about that life so uh the amd presentation was all right um seems like amd is definitely the way to go for the lower end cards this year i'm, de I'm gonna get one of those 250 um 480s i think uh that seems that seems like the best you know bang per buck but uh ubisoft ubisoft was the one that brought the cringe and they they knew it they they just welcomed the cringe and i guess they might as well it's the only reason i really enjoyed watching their conference um south park killed it i know a lot of people i follow a lot of developers on twitter and a lot of you know mature slightly stuck up people they they hated it but uh the south park they they broke in with uh, they didn't say it was south park just this generic ass ubisoft trailer cuts in with fancy cgi pans and you know 3d stuff and talking about terrorism and you know take back what's ours and then it's south park and then they're like i just told them i just put it in a computer to make awesome trailer and that's what it came out and it, it's just every Ubisoft trailer. There, there were even other trailers where I was saying on Twitter, when, when, wow, this is a really great you know, South Park trailer here. Because they just absolutely nailed that stupid Ubisoft trailer feel. Um, and, they just, and whether you like them or not, the South Park guys, they really owned that stage. Um, so the South, the South Park game, that looked, that looked pretty good. Um, and whether or not you like that sort of humor, they nail that sort of humor. Ubisoft wants to be that sort of edgy, you know, self-aware humor, but they're not. They they suck. Um, but Trey and Matt actually do it. Um, but yeah, that the Ubisoft, they've really brought the awkward stuff. Like, I think three different people were excited about, oh, I said a swear on stream. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, it's so naughty. It's like, oh my god, shut the fuck up. You are the third person to swear on this stream. Ugh. <sighs> You know, speaking of swearing on stream, on Microsoft stream, in fucking Gears of War, they censored swearing. Like, they just completely dropped the audio. It's like, you're showing all of this gore and stuff, and you can't, you can't let them swear? Whatever. That's, that's an embarrassing part of the industry, in my opinion. Um, Watch Dogs looks pretty bad. Um, they fixed their protagonist issue, I'll give them that. Um, but, I mean, you play as a bunch of domestic terrorists. There's, there's no getting around that. You play as a bunch of, you play as the most millennial, you play as exactly what every, you know, 70-year-old white CEO thinks millennials look like and do. You're that. And you're Bernie Sanders supporters, and you're going to literally shoot a bunch of Trump supporters and blow things up with bombs you're domestic terrorists i'm sorry that is they had an interesting angle with this you know row row fight the power stuff and they have a bunch of cool hacking gadgets and you know the cyber not cyberpunk but you know um what do you call like a modern cyberpunk but you know the 
you know, they're hacking and they're going to, you know, take back what's ours. And that's cool until they start shooting people and blowing things up and then they're just a bunch of terrorists. Uh, that's really not cool at all. Like, and it has this total mismatch where it kind of wants to be GTA, but it wants to be more serious than GTA. GTA only works because it's not serious. And GTA is often still awkward and kind of bad in a few ways, even when it isn't serious. Um, so it's like all of the bad. Like, it's a GTA that does not realize its protagonists are awful people. Um, <laughs> which is <laughs> amazing and terrible. Uh, so I'm not interested in Watch Dogs 2. Uh, Steep looked pretty cool, though I had to joke that... Even when Ubisoft is showing a sports game, they have to show somebody dying every minute or so, or else the audience will get bored. Um, and then there was that war game for war people, um, For Honor, that was just like the most generic, non... That that was every AAA game that does not have guns. It's, you know, loud Viking guys screaming, and they're fighting, and nobody knows why they're fighting. That's apparently even a plot point now, that we don't know why they're fighting, and they're just... They're fighting, and people die because of war, and war, 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 yeah. And th their, their eagle game, their VR eagle game, is about killing other eagles. <sighs> I, I was really looking forward to um, Eagle Flight. Or maybe, was it How We Soar? Was that the one I saw, maybe? I could swear I saw a VR eagle game that looked really cool and did not have killing people. But their eagle game is just capture the flag murder game but with eagles now um you blew it oh yeah psvr was shown really well by sony too i forgot to mention that uh i think they're really doing the vr thing right you know it, the impressions are great despite you know people are saying oh we're gonna get ps2 style graphics it's like no we're not um impressions are good it, they said there's gonna be like 50 titles between launch and the end of the year um, the price is pretty decent. Um, I think PSVR is probably going to be the only VR I have for uh, maybe a year. Like, I, I kind of want to wait for those headsets to go down a bit. Um, Vibe is the one I'm interested in. Oculus is terrible. Like the um, the developers for um, Serious Sam, the it's like this sort of turret shooty thing. Like it's a Serious Sam VR game. Uh, they said that Oculus offered them, and I quote. A shit ton of money, but they said no. And they're published by Devolver, so I mean they don't need that much money. But um, yeah, they said no to Devolver and Steam, or they said no to um, Oculus, not Devolver. Um, and Steam is saying they are they're funding VR developers out of you know basically a Steam revenue. Um, you know, you get prepaid your Steam money, and then you know, as you earn money on Steam, you know, you pay them back basically. Um, and there's no exclusive de deal on that, and Gabe Newell said, you know, VR exclusivity hurts everybody, which is basically true. Oculus just kind of sucks. I mean, it's Facebook. Who who, who would have expected Facebook to ruin a company? So uh, I'm hoping in a year the VR landscape on PC is less of a mess, and a lot of the VR exclusives will have, you know, expired, hopefully. Um I guess that's all the major conferences. All right, there's a Nintendo. I mean, it's not really a conference, but... Um, I mean, everybody's talking about Zelda, so I guess what they got what they wanted. Um, it was a really weird-ass conference. I mean, not conference. Weird stream. But, like, they just interspersed little announcements in there. Even after they basically said they wouldn't do that, and there was only Zelda. Then they, you know, announced um, Rhythm Heaven which is digital only, unfortunately. They announced some new Amiibos. Uh, were those the only things? I forget what else. There's something else, I think. Uh, there was Pokemon. Uh, I was most interested in the Pokemon stuff. They presented it really poorly, though. Um, it is cool that Pokemon finally shows what moves will be super effective and stuff. I mean, why not? Um, be good for beginners. Um... I really don't care about the more realistic proportions. They're talking about it being immersive. And it's like, really? Nintendo's going to go for that now? I I, uh, I I don't care about it being immersive. It looks like we can we can change clothes now. Or again. That I, I honestly could not get into Omega Ruby. Because I'm just going to be, you know, boring standard character. 
And I gotta change that stupid chicken crest hat that the female protagonist wears. I, I can't wear that. That is so terrible. I hope you can take off hats in this game. That would be like the killer Gen 7 Pokemon feature. You can take off the hat. Just no hat. Just please. Hashtag no hat Pokemon. Um, Zelda? I don't know. I don't know. It, it looks like every Ubisoft game, but with a really nice look to it. That, that's that's really not a compliment. It's got breakable weapons. It's got crafting. It's got survivable elements. I hate all of those things. It's got the thing where you climb on a tower and a bunch of new icons appear on your mini map. I hate that. Uh, I, I can't get very excited for it. I just can't. And there's the, 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 there's only four dungeons. There's a bunch of shrines that are like mini dungeons. I hope those are done really well because I don't know. I'm o I'm open to open world traversal. That sounds fine. Breakable weapons and crafting and all that crap. Uh, I don't know. And then Nintendo went on to make complete or no, it was Anuma. Or, uh, I can't remember how to s say his name, but. Um, Anouma, you know who I mean, you know, the Zelda director, um, was trying to explain his way out of not having a female Link, and so basically everything they've said just gets worse. Um, so people were expecting or hoping for a female Link or, you know, a playable female character in the new Zelda. There were rumors about it, we've asked about it before, um... There were some people that thought the Link might be feminine, or might be a woman, because, you know, sort of feminine. You know, that's kind of been a thing in prior games already. But, uh, so, the first thing they said was that, oh, we considered having a female option, but it would be simpler to use Zelda for that instead of having a female Link, because it's really freaking difficult to, you know, slightly alter Link's already feminine model, throw in, you know, a toggle switch... And have this basically unvoiced character be female. That's that's apparently really hard now. Um, so they wanted to make a playable Zelda. Because having two characters is definitely way simpler than having one character that can switch gender. I'm not really following their logic already. But that's what they said. So they decided that have if they're going to have a female character, it's got to be Zelda, right? Um, so, But then they decided, oh, um, if Zelda is doing all of the action then what will link do because it's you know you gotta have link doing stuff even though they've had several games where zelda does basically nothing except be kidnapped why not have link be kidnapped they did that in in mario in princess peach mario or in super princess peach mario gets kidnapped or some crap i mean it doesn't really matter um so i don't know they 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 thought too much of Link doing things. And then after that explanation, which is already bad, they give this explanation that the Triforce is balanced, and it would throw off the balance of the Triforce to have a female Link because they have the male one, which is Link, the Triforce of Courage. They have the female one, which is the Triforce of Wisdom, which is Zelda, and they have another male one, which is the Triforce of Power and uh, Ganon slash Dwarf. So that's two males and one female, and having two females and one male would obviously unbalance that somehow. Uh, they're, just, they're just making stuff up at that point. And the thing about the Triforce and balance of gender is the Triforce itself... You know, it's the power of Din, Freyor, and um, Naryu, I think. It's the three It's the three goddesses, so the Triforce is entirely feminine. It's just who holds it that happens to be two guys and a girl, which is still not a balance. And, I don't know, they're stupid. Um, and then after all of that, they said, oh, well, we're going to try one more time. And so they said, well, Link is gender neutral, which is not what gender neutral means, by the way, and that he's androgynous, which he's been basically forever. You know, basically since every design after 80s Link has been fairly androgynous, even 80s Link wasn't super, you know, masculine. And if anything, this Link is less feminine than the Smash Bros. 4 and Skyward Sword Links. So 
I don't really buy that. I mean, he's not any more androgynous than he's been before. Um, and it, they've clearly stated that he is a male character, so you can't say he's gender neutral. That's, that's not what gender neutral means. And it's not that, you know, it's evil to not have a female Link. All they had to do was say they don't want to have a female Link. Their explanations are just making it so much worse because, you know, you can do a, you know, a sort of dumb thing, but it's kind of okay because, I mean, you know, other games can have female characters. But when your excuses for not having one are so bad, ugh, that's what's really awkward. Like, they just can't imagine having a female, you know, protagonist in a Zelda game. That seems to be what it boils down to. Ugh. But if you follow my Twitter, like, my, <clears throat> my Twitter's been on fire because I've tw tweeted some things about that. And, I mean, I think it's pretty universal that people think Nintendo is pretty dumb for what they've been saying. Well, not all of Nintendo, but, you know, <clears throat> they need better PR around this. And, um, yeah. I didn't mean to talk this long about the whole E3 thing, especially the Nintendo stuff, but, uh, you know, I think... I think that about covers most of it. You know, I didn't talk about a lot of the games. A lot of the games I'm not personally in too interested in. Um, you know, like half of UB, more than half, almost all of Ubisoft stuff I'm not interested in. They're doing a new Grow Home game. That's cool. Um, it's called Grow Up. Uh, so that's exciting. You know, sort of. It's still Ubisoft, but uh, Ubisoft indies are a lot better. Well, sort of indies. Much more exciting than regular output. Um yeah, mostly, you know, it's a pretty dang good upcoming year for gaming. You know, 2016 has been really good. 2015 was good. 2017 looks like it's going to be good, too. It's 2014 sucked, but we're really coming into this generation really well. And um, PC support's been better than it's ever been, so, you know, it's great for everybody. You know, especially after this whole, everything's doomed, PC games are doomed, non-casual games are doomed, dear me goodness. Well, no, that was all dumb. And uh, it's kind of dumb for Nintendo to not be, you know, thinking like they need to not make a PS4 and they need to make something weird and new. Because we know how the hell that worked last time. And, ugh. Uh, I was going to talk about, um, I wanted to talk about the sort of iterative consoles concept, but... Uh, I've been talking for long enough, so uh, I think I'll leave that for another video. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, <clears throat> one quick little status update. I uh, started a little backup channel. I'll have the link to that in the description. There's no point in, like, it's not going to post videos unless something, like, super bad happens. I really hope to never have to use it, and I really doubt I will. I haven't really had many issues with YouTube at all, but uh, you never know. That's the unfortunate thing. You know, copyright, somebody could be a dick. And then that's really all it takes is one person to be a dick with copyright stuff. And then I could be out of a channel for a while or, you know, I'm not quite at that big size where, you know, if they take something down that uh, people would be outraged enough that uh, something actually happens. So I don't know. But yeah, I made a new channel. I'm uploading over a thousand videos on my backup PC right now. Um, my All of my videos just happen to fit under my bandwidth cap. So, uh. I just straight up and went and uploaded them. And let me say, no one is doing what YouTube is doing. I um, I looked around for alternatives, just you know, just in case, to see if maybe there was a different way to do a backup channel on some different site, you know. But uh, like Vimeo has major upload limits. Like you can only limit upload so many files and so many gigabytes per day, like megabytes per day actually. And um, there's all these limitations. All of the viewer bases are so tiny. And, uh, but then there's YouTube, and I signed up with a brand new account, no ties to my old account. I checked a couple boxes. I added a phone number. Um, I checked a few more boxes, and instantly I have the ability to upload infinite length videos, basically, the ability to monetize. I have almost all of the features of my main account with like zero effort on a brand new channel. Uh, if, if you recently started a YouTube channel, you don't know how lucky you are. Cause I took me years to get a lot of those features that you're taking for granted. But, uh, YouTube does dumb stuff, but nobody else does what they do. So, uh, I, overall I'm reasonably happy with it. And, uh, I do hope to stay here. 
But yeah, just it's not anything I'm gonna spend too much of my my, my time on. But I just wanted to have that backup channel set up, and it was easier than I thought. I I'm pretty impressed. Um, hopefully, I'll never have to use it, and we'll never hear about it again. But uh, it was nice that it was easy enough to set up. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you've been enjoying the you know faster pace of videos lately, and I'll try to keep uh, making some good videos.